And we thought about the program in a number of different parts. The first is what was a vitamin, and um, and and these are you, you know what we call micronutrients that you have to eat, where you can't make by yourself. So you have to eat them, and without them, you can't you can't maintain health. Um, and then we ask, well, what happens if you don't have them? Okay, so for example, famously, if you don't have, if you don't eat enough vitamin C, you get scurvy. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't have enough vitamin B, you get berry berry. You know, and so there are a lot of diseases out there which are terrible if you don't have enough. The question, the most interesting question, because at the end of the day, we, we live in a rich country, okay, where scurvy and berry berry are just not endemic on on road. Ju it, it just isn't. It's more better. And I think that was the question we were trying to ask, which is fair enough, okay? A lot of people do think that. In fact, that's what the supplements industry cashes in on, right? Where most people you speak on the street, including myself, I have to say, okay? Not now, but including myself a few years ago. I said, well, if it's not doing you any harm, then it's a little bit like an insurance policy, right? I mean, if, if fine, I, mean, I might be making expensive we, you are making very expensive we, but if it's an insurance policy, then what's the, then what's the problem? But then what we begin to find out through, throughout the program, and you can ask me about more details, is that one class in particular, fat-soluble antioxidants, this is vitamin A and vitamin E in particular, don't, are, are not just there as an insurance policy. Taking too much of it is actually bad for you. It actually increases your likelihood of dying. And so then that really began to... Well, it was to, to me, it was shocking, right? right? The data has been out there, but, but it was not like the media never picked up on this. And so I think therein lies the problem. I think what the conclusions were, pretty much, but if you can afford vitamins, you probably don't need them. I think that's the first thing. And secondly, I think fat-soluble antioxidants, you don't have to take, you, you shouldn't take any extras. There are exceptions which we might get to, but in effect, some people will always ne need uh, um, some supplementation. For example, I'm from the tropics. I'm a tropical boy living in a northern rock. I am vitamin D deficient. I should probably be taking some vitamin D supplements. There's a biological reason for that. I think uh, ladies in particular, um, younger ladies, adolescents are probably going to need some kind of iron supplement. They lose iron that time of the month, etc., etc. There's a good reason. And if you're trying to become pregnant, folic acid, and if you're vegan, vitamin B12. Everything else? That's really interesting. Yeah, probably not. You know, I used to take I used to take quite a few supplements. Right. But I've really scaled back. And and perhaps it was because I was influenced by your program. But I really had to ask myself, you know, what have I felt any benefit? And and I recently had a blood test, checked on my vitamin D, so I'm gonna continue my vitamin D because it seems to be a good level in the blood test when I've been taking yes. it. Yes. Things like that. Um, but one thing that really interested me from your program uh -huh. was the realization that vitamins are regulated as foods and not drugs. So they don't actually have to prove to be effective. They don't. To go on sale. They don't. This is once again something, I know I should know this. This, I did not know at all till I made the program. So people think I go into to making these programs with a whole set of, of presumptions that I'm trying to just find evidence for. And some things are really crazy and maybe I'm doing that. But the vast majority of the time we're asking, okay, well, look, people want to know. And then, and then we looked at, no, so vitamins are not drugs. So when you have a drug, drug X, paracetamol, okay, for example, I am taking paracetamol because I have a fever or because I have a headache. It works and it works because they have done trials. They know what the safe dose is. We know that you shouldn't take more than, you know, six of these tablets a day, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. because it, it is, it's, so all of these things are there. So we know a safe dose, we know the harmful dose, and we know what we should be taking, okay? And we know it works. Vitamins, none. Because vitamins were originally extracted from food, it's considered a food, which means that if you ask the question, well, what is a safe dose of vitamin X? We don't actually know because no one has actually done the studies mm -hmm. because it's not regulated. They're not needed to do the studies. But what's interesting and what we found out was now, unlike a drug, when you buy a drug paracetamol used for fever and for pains, okay, they can say that because that's what has been found in the test. Look at the back of any vitamins pack. It cannot say this will make you younger, smarter, have more hair. It can't tell you any of that. What it can say is iron, for example is say, are you tired? Iron contributes to normal levels of hemoglobin, 
Okay, okay, the, the, the oxygen carrying thing, a uh, capacity in your, in your blood. So therefore helps you feel less tired if you don't have enough iron, but they don't say that. Contributes to normal means if you didn't have enough, if we top it up, it will be fine for you. And this is a, I call it verbal gymnastics because it is, and I, and I, and I didn't realize, look at the back of every single packet of everything, it will say contributes to normal eye development, con contributes to normal, you know, skin. There are, there are any number of, of I don't want to get libel, so I'm not going to mention any companies, but there are any number of things which you've got, the beauty products, okay, beauty product supplements, not beauty products, contributes to normal nails, cuticles, uh, uh, skin complexion, all of which is if you don't have normals am normal amounts of it, then you're ill and, and your fingernails are falling out, your fingernails are not falling out. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and, and that's why, because they're not regulated as drugs, they have to do the marketing in a way which is still legal, but to my mind, are fooling us, are misleading us. So naturally, the supplements industry uh, had some criticism and they argued, I mean, one brand in particular said that um, the program ignored widespread evidence that a large proportion, I'm summarizing here, a large yeah. pro proportion of UK adults may not be achieving adequate vitamin and mineral levels. You, you did kind of address that, but do you think that they have a point that, that maybe their supplements are aimed at people that need, that need it? Okay. I think that is when you do take a supplement because there's some people who need supplements. Okay. Undoubtedly, this is going to be the situation, including the supplements that are made by these brands. They are not marketing it. I'm, good, I'm sorry. They are not marketing it towards the people who need it. You look at their advertisement campaign. Next time you step on a tube or metro or wherever it is, in whatever country in the world, okay? Mm. And look at the, the, the board. Do they put a little old lady with a walking stick saying that this little old lady needs something? I can almost guarantee you, no. They have a gold medal award winning swimmer. They have a footballer. They have a supermodel, okay? And what they're saying is that contributes to normal you, you, you know, so the, what they're saying is this doesn't make you look more beautiful or look or, or be a better swimmer. So yes, that I can see their argument and their argument is true, except in their actions. They are not marketing it towards the people who actually need it. Why would you pay, be putting an Olympic swimmer there? I guess, yeah. I, I mean, those are the supplements that you kind of see on sale in a supermarket where I, I've seen more adverts for those than ones that you kind of get via a a specialist website recommended by a nutritionist. Yes. So I guess there's a difference. There's there. a, Maybe there is a difference being... on who you're marketing it towards. Yeah. Because the main manufacturers that are actually there, I, I, you cannot convince me that they're trying to, they're targeting the um, refugee camps. Are they? Really? Shut up. No, they're not. They, they're, they, these companies are not targeting. They're targeting the people who live here on the street, right here in uh, Fitzrovia or wherever, wherever we're at. Somewhere, somewhere very nice. Somewhere yeah. very nice.